Now we're going to go on to section two. So I'm going to introduce another color now, burnt sienna. It'll put a little bit of effect into the sky and it'll give you a chance to see what you can do with just two colors. We're now starting the second part. Enter burnt sienna. It's a beautiful color, a beautiful tan color. Always squeeze from the bottom of the tube, otherwise you'll lose all the paint from underneath. I'll just put a little bit there. Add in some water. I'm going to make a wash out of it here. Now the wash is of course where you just have water with some paint in it. See it's a lovely tan, a lovely vibrant tan color. Burnt sienna is beautiful. It's a beautiful combination with the indigo as well. I love that. I like to do up a room in those colors actually. Do a big paint and to go with it. I'll just show you now what it's like on the, on the test card now in a second. Those are the two indigos, well, indigo in different strengths. I'm putting a bit of the burnt sienna into indigo there to darken it. You can make, you can really darken it almost down to a black. That would be a kind of very ominous cloud that I could use then in the sky. There it is now, that's a lovely tan. That's it, nearly full strength. And then of course, when you add water, it's, it gets weaker. Wait to see it now beside the indigo, it's gorgeous, I love it. Yeah, that's the indigo now beside it. So you might think it's a very odd choice to have burnt sienna in the sky, but really it gives that lovely, um, maybe after a storm, daybreak or something like that, it's a, or even sunset maybe. It's just a lovely warm colour to have in the sky. Maybe a little bit more water into that. It might have been a little bit too dark. That's why it's handy to have the test card. Now I'm going to, like before, just wet the whole page. And again, even though I'm only doing the sky part, I'm going to wet the whole page to avoid any buckling or warping of the paper, even though that paper is very, very good and it doesn't do that very much. That um, 300 pound Arches paper is fantastic. Oops. Now, there goes the burnt sienna. Just put it on. Now, I never plan, I have no plan for it. I have no exact plan for this painting because watercolor is almost interactive. You know, it does something and you do something. The water takes it in one way or another. So it never never good to have a really strong plan, just have an idea of what you're going to do. Lift it up and let it flow. It's a handy kind of a brush actually because you know it's good coverage on it and yet you can use the edge of it for little bits like that. Little slivers of clouds in the distance or whatever. I'm using the paler wash down and some of it, and you can see the very dark wash where I put in a little bit of the burnt sienna up at the top. That should be okay. This is where you have to avoid doing too much now. <laughs> Step away from the painting. Little brush is good. And again, it's the point of the brush that's more important than the size of it. If you get a, I think that's a size six, but you know, it might go for a size four or something, but that there's a lovely little um, point on that brush. So it's very, it's very good. Getting carried away here a bit now. I'm putting in the dark clouds. Step away from the paint and run it. Now I've brought it down to, I'm just going to put a bit of C in at the bottom of this. But the sky was the most important thing that I wanted to get across for the demonstration really, about how you can just float on colours. I 
this is a pale burnt sienna all the way across. That brush is really good for getting a straight line. Now remember with the water, you need variation. So you can't just paint on the sea in the same color you want. You want it lighter in places and darker in places, darker maybe from side to side, paler in the distance and more stronger colors up close by. Bits of dry brush in like that. The best practice you can get for painting is to actually just be outside looking at things. And don't tax your brain too much. Just look. Look at the sea in different weathers. Of course, I have the burnt sienna here now. I may as well do a bit of a beach as well, a bit of sand. Sand can be any color. I mean, almost any color. People sometimes they say, students sometimes say, what color is sand? I mean, you know, you get pure white sand, you get dark brown sand, you get tan golden sand, you get when the sand is wet, it's a different color from when it's dry. That's why I'm putting dark marks on the sand now for bringing the sea in fully to the left there. You can see how the tan and the indigo go nice together. The burnt sienna, I should say, and the indigo. I'm just going to take out a few little bits, removing small little bits for rocks. I'll wait till they dry, until I sort of, you know, dicky them up a little bit as rocks, but uh, for the time being, I'll just take out those little bits and remove the paint. Paint removal is a, a, a very, very useful technique that you can actually remove colors. There's a little speck on there that I didn't intend to be on, so I'm just removing it. Um, they say you can't fix mistakes in watercolor, but you can. And with that paper, it's it's a lot easier. So I just wet that little mark and just removed it with a bit of, of tissue. Just going to let it dry here now for a while. Okay, so I've let that dry a bit, but now it's not dry completely. And uh, before it gets too dry, I'm just going to remove a bit of paint here for the sale of a boat again. Now remember, you just have a clean, damp brush, but make sure it's very clean and make sure you don't hit off any other color on your palette when you're doing it. And just dabbing it there with the tissue. What I'm doing there, every time I, every time I wipe it, I wipe it off with, with the tissue as well because there's going to be some paint on the brush. I'm just putting a little bit of shadow at the bottom for the, for the boat. Don't have too much paint on your brush here now. And just touch it lightly, lightly, lightly to get the effect of the mast. Put a little bit of shadow on the sail. Just dry brushing around the rocks now to give them a bit of texture. But the reason I would have, I would have removed the paint from them was to leave highlights on them, you know, to leave little bits of highlight on the rocks. I'm just putting in texture around them, darkening the sand around them because there would probably be little rock pools around there anyway, the sand would probably be a bit dark. But it's nice to have some kind of texture in it anyway. And again, remember, I'm only using the two colors, just the indigo and the burnt sienna. And you can mix those down, right down to a black. You put burnt sienna into the indigo. You put a tiny bit of indigo into the burnt sienna and you get a darker brown. And then the more indigo you put into it, the darker, 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 right down into black. Which, and 
Um, as, and I never ever buy black, never. It's a, it looks dull or something. You can always make much more vibrant blacks from tan, from the browns and the uh, and and the blues. Just putting in little little rocks and little bits of texture. But I can't stress enough how important it is to actually just relax when you're out and and look. Don't worry too much and don't be been too academic about it. I suppose everybody does it differently, but you know, just look, just simply look. So you can be sitting there and actually doing nothing but being very busy at the same time because you're taking in all that information. The skies around here are absolutely beautiful because of all the broken weather that we get. I don't think I could cope in a situation where we had a clear blue sky all the year round. I love the light coming through the clouds and the colours in the sea changing, the colours in the mountains changing. So just to recap that in, in these two videos I've done, it's really just to show you how to, the important thing is the skies really, of how to float on colour and let the colour live don't paint, 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 paint back and forth over it. Once you let the colour flow onto it, you can guide it around the place with the tip of your brush. But don't paint back. Every time you paint back over it, you're actually removing it again. It's not like acrylic or oil where you're smoothing it down. You're not smoothing it down. You're, you're, um, you're just letting it flow. Just, just putting some mountains at the back, some land. Not, not so much mountains, but a bit of land. A little bit like um, a place called Inch here in Kerry. To, you know, it's really good to practice, even with just small bits of paper, if you like, just wet them. First of all, make up washes and have the washes made up before, before you wet the paper. Have a couple of washes made up and ready to go. Then you wet the paper and you float them on. If you wet the paper first and then start putting out your paint and all that, the, 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 the paper will be too dry. But there is just such beauty in the feel of letting the paint flow on and just the, where the where the tip of your brush hits the paper, you know, you're got, if your if your awareness is there, you know, it's just it's just beautiful. And don't try to overwork it. I'm just putting a few little ripples in this in the in the water now. Kind of. And this is where you keep fooling around with it now until the um, until very often you, you destroy it. <laughs> You're better off if you get somebody to come along and take it from you. And I'm not quite finished yet. Brighten it up a little bit. Colours become more intense and brighter as they come close to you. That's interesting. That, that Those colours on the mountains in the distance could be just as intense as the ones up front, but because they're far away, that means more water and a little bit of blue into it. Less intense. Now this is a knife, and this is another technique of removing um, a good sharp knife with a good point on it. And just, uh, seems sacrilegious, but, um, and I found it very hard to do the first time I did it. I, I remember thinking, I'm, I'm destroying it. But it, but it is a, a viable technique where you're, I'm just putting ripples into the sea there now by scraping off the page. And again, see, this is a very good, thick, good quality paper. I can take it. Because it's a it's very effective for um, for this for putting a bit of ripples and movement into the water. But sometimes it kind of hurts to do it. But where the waves where there's waves, there's always a bit of darkness under them. Where the wave turns over, you get little bits of darkness, and I just put in just a little bit of dark. Made pick out one of the, just a mixture of the, the two colors again, and again just to say that you know you can do quite a bit with one just one color. You can do quite a bit with two colors. You can do a lot with two colors, as you can see, and later on in other videos will um, increase that and go into mixing up greens and other reds and other colors and full landscapes, but I also just remind you that I have that video of the 40 minute total Irish landscape if you want to see 
if you want to have a look at that, and I've amalgamated the technique of the sky into that. So the techniques I'm using here is this technique I used in the sky of the complete landscape. Well, I hope you enjoyed that and I really hope you got something out of it. If you did, please give it a like and also make sure to subscribe so that you won't miss out on any other videos that I'm doing. If you'd like to see the 40 minute long full landscape video that I did, click on the video on screen now. Well, hope to see you again soon and thanks again for watching.